I realized I made the biggest mistake of my life when I bought three water guns. He's got no problem standing up straight because Kevin Powell uses words for wheels. So I thought I was gonna go to law school and I said, nah, I'd rather write. And then I moved to New York like in 90 because I really wanted to like pursue the writing. I'm a, cause I'm a poet. They also do like news articles and reviews, music reviews and things like that. This is called mental terrorism. I think all of us in here are going through that shit. Call me a stupefied stoic, however the world's bloody palms have yet to clutch my face in pity. What is it to be locked away in the imagination of kidnappers and unwanted and unappreciated spoil of war? Underdog! Oh, where, oh, where can my underdog be? All right, well, me, Kevin and I said that we were going to share a room together. Kevin and Eric decided that they wanted their room, and that was it. Nobody else was going to have a say. It's one o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, whoa. Yo, Kevin's got to get up at 5 o'clock. Oh, no. Get off of me. Beat it. Break out. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. I was pissed off. I just sat there, you know. And, you know, I was like, why did they all come in here, man? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Get out of my room! Throughout the weekend, we were talking about the fact that we hadn't gone to Jamaica. We wanted to go to Jamaica. We were real jealous about the whole situation. And so I was sitting down there, and I just started scribbling something, you know, like, Ja Ja Jamaica, and put some other words to it. And I said, you know, I gave it to um, Andre, and he made it into a song. Ja Ja Jamaica. We were thinking it would be funny. It was just a playful thing to get together and do this sudden uh, joke on Kevin. Hi, this is our April Fool's joke. We chose a personality that we would want somebody to have, and we wrote it down on a piece of paper and put it in a fishbowl. And then everybody picked from the fishbowl and got the character. What were you doing up there? You and Andre, huh? Andre. <laughs> you look like you're from Michigan. I am from Michigan. How do I know that? Where'd you get your necklace? Um, West Africa. You were in West Africa? He kept looking at my necklace, and I just noticed that this guy, like, had on other people's jewelry. And I mean, you know, Norman is kind of strange to me in a good way, so I was like, okay, no big deal. But Julie just really took me out. Are you trying to change your image or something? You know, sex sells. Did that cat just bark? <laughs> I want to be a dog! <laughs> Everyone's changing personalities in this house. <laughs> Yo, people are losing their minds in this place. I went to Penn Station to pick up my girlfriend, Kasimi. She, she's great. I love her very much. I'm in love. Look, I don't want to see Kasimi's a lot like my mother. You know, both Kasimi and my mother are very strong women. They're very independent-minded, but yet there's a sensitive side to them. You can get a half. Is this good? Yeah. You don't like it? Don't open it if you don't like it. Oh, of course. Still water? Spring water? Well, I don't have any coal. I have one down there. You know? You can take a half of it now. I knew my father vaguely. I knew him up until I was eight years old. He and my mother were never married. You better drink it once you open it. <laughs> you want half? I mean, the thing that strikes me about him is the fact that he basically disowned me when I was eight years old. He told my mother that, you know, I wasn't his son. And, I mean, that's stuck in my mind. You know, still, it's still in my mind because it's like, you know, it was, to me, the ultimate level of irresponsibility. And um, that's just something that's always driven me, you know, to try to be as responsible a person as possible. Beeper. Do you sell drugs? Why do you have a beeper? <laughs> the beeper, I knew it. <laughs> I just was hoping it wasn't going to be a series of comments, you know, like, Kevin, do you play basketball? You play ball around here? Racism is alive and well. Do you think I'm prejudiced? I think you are against white people. Really? Yeah, I, I think you're very bitter. 
bitter. <laughs> Where did that come from? No, I'm not bitter at all. If I was bitter, I wouldn't be in that house. You know, I was like, well, I'm not bitter. But when I thought, I think about it now, you know, I think I have a right to be very angry. You know, I don't, and I'm not apologetic about that. You're prejudged. I'm just as much prejudged. Why who? I mean, did any of us say, well, yo, she's from Alabama and she must be a racist or something? Your history is my history. I agree. We just don't realize it, you know? Kevin. He's got his views and, and points about things, and it just seems like I still don't know what's going through his mind. You know, at times, to get his point across, he's very strong. The way we're taught, everything that's bad is black, and everything that's good is white. You know, you look back at it, you say, well, actually, this really, really affected me. You know, I really learned something about myself. I think one of the problems with our generation, we're, like, afraid to be honest with ourselves, you know? And um, certain people particularly show me, you know, that there are people in our generation trying to um, be human beings and treat other people as human beings. Everything, if you look at, like, all professions and stuff like that, and, and you look at the best in, like, these certain fields, like, like not only just sports, because that's just athletics, Black people are by far dominant over white in all sports. Yo, yo, let's... <laughs> I mean, first of all, you start off with stereotypes. It's like, you know, you're superior in sports and entertainment. That's what a lot of people, white people, think that's all black people can do. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an athlete, man. I'm not a singer. That. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a rapper. I'm a writer. But you would never write about sports. Man, I'd rather not. I'm just, just saying, saying. Because that's a, this society always stereotypes, and that's all we can do. You know what I'm saying? It's like when people have these kind of thoughts, they, it's like it's limiting to you and stuff, right. man. It's like, oh, yeah, Kev can dance, you know, which I, I can do. Or, you know, he can play ball. He can do this. He can do that, man. How many people know that Kevin Powell can write? You know what I mean? Right. I appreciate this. Uh -huh. Whenever a black person, including myself, has an opinion, is assertive about it or is aggressive about it, we become threatening to white people. I would be brought into a court, and they would ask me specific questions like, well, did this happen with Kevin? This happened with Kevin? This happened with Kevin? This is all I know of Kevin, and I would have to say yes. Yeah, I would have no, to say yes. But stop, you just said that's all you know of Kevin. That's all I know of that's Kevin. That's all you know. A pattern of aggressive behavior. That's all you know about me, out of these two and a half months. What is, what is racism to you? It involves control, man. Everybody in this apartment who is white has the possibility of becoming racist if they fall into the traps of this society. Well, I'm just saying that this land, right, this land that we live on, the physical land, is going to be here. That was stolen from the Indians. We'll be here. Well, chip on your shoulder or not, I mean, you know, I Should think... we mean chip on no, your shoulder? No, I just mean, like, I think there's a lot of opportunity in this country. Opportunity for what? Opportunity? They look, took one look at me and they were like, no, we can't hire him. You know what I'm saying? Why not, Becky? The color of my skin. That's an opportunity, Becky. Well, that's, that's an a opportunity. Very good speech, Kevin, and I agree that, with you. Wait a minute, a good speech? Well, that's reality. I'm, I'm sure that that happened to you. And there's a reality because I'm female, I don't get a lot of crap <laughs> Becky, either. But you know what, Becky? And I think wait a minute, you want to? But you want another reality? If you What's look at the statistics, reality? white women benefit for the, benefited from the civil rights movement more than black people. Look it up. Then I'm the lucky one. You are. In a certain good. sense, you That's are. That's good. Well, are you saying white people are the only people that can no. be racist? To me, racism and prejudice are two different things. Prejudice means to, be, to prejudge, and a lot of black people are prejudiced. I have my own prejudices. I'm not even going to lie. I came into this situation with prejudices. Some of them have been proven out. Some of them haven't been. You know, some of them have been discounted. You know what I mean? This is my point. This is what I was saying to Andre. You come from a particular background. I come from a particular background. Wait a minute. Will you listen? Why did you, you, you get so close? Will you listen? Black people are emotional. That's my explanation. White people are. Oh my God. Listen. Will you it's do? It's not a black white like, thing. Why do you have to get so will close? Will you just listen? Will you listen? I'm listening, Kevin. Yesterday You're... was a building point. Why you happen why to be. Why do you get so? I don't understand that. That's Kevin. part of the problem. Get off what, do you the black white, white thing. I'm it's a reality. Of it. Look I'm at Los Angeles. What are you gonna do? Hit me? No. And there you go. You said that yesterday. Why what do you are you Why do you assume? Because I'm a black man, I'm going to hit you? That's no. what you assume? Yes, you do. You know, like, I was like, Julie, she's from Alabama. You know, typical. She's proven, you know, that she's the opposite of a lot of things that were in my head. I'm sorry it had to happen like that. I'm really sorry it happened like that, too. My point wasn't to offend you or your life or where you're coming from. I was just talking about where I was coming from. Do you understand? I definitely understand, you know. And I would never want to offend you and put you off. And if I did, I apologize, because that wasn't where I was coming from. I don't know if it's resolved, but I mean, I feel better. At least I can talk to her now, you know. Here, give me a second. I'll teach you how to play the blues. Ready? I am the blues, baby. You know, it's like... I think I kind of came in as a cynic, you know, very cynical. I was like, yeah, whatever, you know. Well, I'm 25, I'm the oldest one here, and I've experienced things, you know, what can they possibly teach me, you know? And that hasn't been the case. 
Um, this project kind of shows the possibilities in this society. If people are forced to live in a situation for a certain period of time, what can happen, you know, in terms of us growing and living and sharing together? Later. See you, Kev. Anything you forget, we split. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>